What's up guys? Uh, it's Tim Jalbert here. Um, a little bit about myself. So I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Cincinnati and um, in the MD program. I'm originally from Bristol, Connecticut, out in the Northeast. And um, I decided to start this channel to kind of share my experiences as a medical student. You know, the ways that I have figured out I study best and, you know, study strategies, um, you know, my mindset throughout medical school, what the experience has been like, um, things that I do outside of medicine that I'm really excited and passionate about that I think would be really interesting to learn about. Um, you know, books that I've read that have really changed my perspective on my career and, um, and even outside of my career and my relationships, etc. But um, for this video, um, you know, I'm just kind of winging it. This is my first, um, kind of like five things or like, you know, advice videos that I'm going to do. And it's going to be uh, the five big, five biggest mistakes that I made as a medical student. Um, these are things that, you know, I really wish that I knew before I started medical school, you know, back when I was a pre-med, um, after you get into medical school, like there's that euphoric feeling, you think you have it all figured out. It's like you're on top of the world. You got into medical school. You're going to be a doctor. You did it. Um, that's at least how I felt. And, um, you know, I feel like every medical student has that experience once they start their first block where they're like, whoa, that feeling backfired. Like I have no idea what's going on. A lot of information really fast. And, um, it's commonly described as like a fire hose and, um, of, of information. So, you know, just to get right into it, the first thing that, you know, that was one of the biggest mistakes I made as a medical student was um, that I wish I optimized my study strategies sooner. I, th I think, um, you know, I really wish that I spent more time kind of figuring out how I learn best um, before I put all my energy into, you know, the material that I was learning. Um, I think maybe it's a little bit easier to say that, you know, in hindsight, because Back when you're, when I was in, you know, an M1, I had all this material that I needed to learn in, in a short amount of time. But, but at the same time, you know, the earlier you get your optimal study strategy down, the better off you'll be. Like, I, you know, by the time I was a third year medical student, I think I had my study strategies nailed down, and that's why I did extremely well on the Step Two CK and um, USMLE exam. And you know, study strategies that I wish I had locked in before I took step one, which I did well on as well, but not quite as well as the step two. And these are topics that are, you know, super salient and super important for medical students that I'm very happy to make videos about in the future. But um, I'll just, you know, use that as a segue into my second mistake that I made in medical school, which was um, not starting my studying for my USMLE exams on day one of medical school. Um, I firmly believe looking back that, you know, I would have been much better off um, on my step one and even further down the line, step two exams, if um, as I was studying for my weekly exams during medical school and bi-weekly exams, that, you know, in parallel, I would do practice questions on the same material that are targeted towards step one USMLE style questions. So for any of you that are watching that uh, maybe pre-med or don't understand the difference between um, the USMLE exams and med school exams, well, your medical school has their own way of testing your knowledge on the same material and some of their questions that you take um, in the exams that, that you'll take during your block. Um, some schools will have an end of block exam only and, but my medical school, we had weekly exams for some blocks and then bi-weekly exams for other blocks. And then at the end of the block, we'd have the end of block exam, which was worth usually 25% of our final uh, grade. So, however, um, the USMLE style questions that you will have to take in step one and step two are in a league of their own. They're not necessarily harder. I mean, some would argue that they're harder than their own medical school's questions, but they are, they have a certain style about them and certain concepts that they really want you to know. 
and um, if you don't understand a particular concept, um, you are most like you very likely to get a question wrong, and you know it, you're not likely to get it right by guessing, at least in my opinion. So, um, my, one of my biggest regrets, one of the biggest mistakes, was not starting right away. And what I would have done is I would have um, bought a UWorld. It's the gold standard of question banks for uh, USMLE exams. And I would have gotten a 12 month subscription. Um, it's like, you know, a couple hundred bucks. Um, I don't remember the exact price, but it's well worth it. I mean, you're already going to be going into some debt for medical school. So um, do not be afraid to make that investment. It'll pay off massive dividends for you. Um, so moving on to uh, number three. Uh, number three mistake that I made in medical school is I wish I shadowed more uh, different specialties early on when I was a first and second year medical student. I kind of had, you know, had my mindset early on um, before even entering medical school that I wanted to go into neurosurgery. And um, one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that I, I am uh, applying and going into orthopedic surgery. So... I'm in the process of interviewing, um, you know, it's a, it's a long and, and you know, it can be stressful process that uh, every student goes through. For me, I'm going through it in a particularly uh, competitive specialty. So we'll see how it goes. I got my fingers crossed and um, I'm optimistic. But I wish that I shadowed, you know, specialties like orthopedics, anesthesia, you know, ENT, ophthalmology and different specialties that I never really gave the time of day because I ended up choosing orthopedics and I do think that's the right field for me in medicine. However, I didn't quite give other specialties the time of day to decide if those were the right specialties for me. And I think something that's super important to figure out as you proceed through medical school is what do I not want to do? Because I think it's easier to figure out by process of elimination what you want to do for your medical career um, by figuring out, you know, oh, I'm not interested. Like, yeah, you know, I don't really want to deal with, you know, like or like abdominal organs. So I don't want to do general surgery. I think that's kind of gross. Or, you know, I don't really care about bones, so I don't want to do ortho. Um, it seems like they work extremely hard. And like, yeah, you know, I don't want to do that. Some, you know, and then anesthesia. Oh, I don't really want to sit behind the curtain in the OR. And, and play Sudoku all day, so, so I don't want to do that. So you know, there's all there's some some of that is stereotype, some of that is true, but you know, another video for that. Um, so the fourth thing um, I would say is I wish, you know, from for my specialty of choice, orthopedics. Um, not all specialties, but for mine and for other, you know, at least moderately competitive specialties, um, it's highly encouraged to have research. Um, have your name on some research papers in your application when you apply for residency. So for me, I probably had, I probably ended up with somewhere between four and six, four and seven um, publications. However, um, not one of those publications am I first author. So that's kind of a big deal. You know, I, 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 if I were to go back and start over, this kind of goes back to the shadowing thing. If I was able to figure out that orthopedics was what I wanted earlier, because, <coughs> excuse me, because it took me until third year, the beginning of my third year to really decide that. And I think that's kind of late for a field that's competitive like orthopedics. You kind of want to have time early on in medical school to build momentum, build rapport with the department, um, build rapport in the research department if you want to get involved in research and and you know get to know the residents and and, uh, and faculty so I would have you know figured out ideally that orthopedics was what I was interested in doing as a second year or ideally a first year and I would have you know gotten involved or come up with a research idea, you know, done a, a thorough literature search and figured out, all right, this is a research question that I want to answer. And this is the clinical project I want to do. And I want to see it through to its completion for the next two years. And um, 
it's a it's a matter of quality over quantity that I think is pretty important in in orthopedics. You know, when you when you interview um, most programs, not just in orthopedics. I say orthopedics because that's what I'm doing, but most programs will ask students, "What research have you done? Can you talk to us about it?" And they want you to they want to see that you have a thorough understanding of the project that you were a part of and know that you weren't just plugging numbers in for a resident. So, you know, if you cranked out an excellent, thorough, complete project that where you were first or maybe second, but ideally first author, that's much more impressive than being the fourth, fifth or sixth author that you helped, you know, a big team of people do for six or seven different papers. And you you can't really talk in depth about any of them. Um, so the last thing, number five, uh, mistake that I made in medical school is I didn't take enough times to kind of enjoy the ride. I really think that looking back, you know, as a fourth year, um, I feel like where the, where has the time gone? You know, I, I, I feel like just, you know, it was like a time warp from when I was a university student at uh, Cornell University and like racking my brain. Like I I literally was thinking to myself like, oh my gosh, if I get into medical school, then I've made it. Like I I feel like I'm never gonna get into medical school. Like, and if I do, it'll be the greatest thing in my life. And that's the feeling I, I mean, because you know, I'm sure it's still this way for pre-meds. Like as a pre-med, you have all these horror stories like, oh my, you know, I know my best friend's son, um, he had a 528 on the MCAT and a 4.3 GPA and he didn't get into any medical schools and he has to reapply. You hear stories like that all the time. And, um, and it's very easy to feel intimidated into thinking that you have a, like, a long shot at getting into medical school. But looking back, I'm, I'm thinking like if I were to talk to my past self, my college self, like I'd be like, look man, it's, everything's gonna be okay. You're, you're gonna be a doctor. And like, I think back to like when I got, when I got that first acceptance letter and I called one of my, one of my good college friends who was also applying to medical school and I called him about it and he said, dude, you're gonna be a doctor. Like this is incredible. And, and I didn't know what kind of doctor. I, I didn't know if I was gonna be a, a, you know, a pediatric neurosurgeon or a general internist or, uh, or, you know, a pediatrician. Like I had no idea. I mean, well, I kind of did want to be a neurosurgeon, but you know, I, I knew that I could have been any type of doctor that I wanted to, and I would have been happy with it at that point. So, um, I try to channel that every now and then and remind myself, like, you know, you're going to be helping people. You're going to be Get, helping people get better, you're going to be helping them through some of their most difficult times when they're the most sick, um, including the families that are there with them. And, you know, it's going to be fulfilling and you're going to live a great life, no matter what specialty you get into, even if you don't match the first time around, which happens a lot with um, competitive specialties. So, you know, taking life a little bit less seriously, um, you know, enjoying the small wins too, you know, along the way, you're going to have a lot of exams. Um, you know, even if you only have an end of block exam every block, you're going to have a lot of end of block exams. You're going to have a lot of OSCEs, which are virtual, um, clinical simulated patient clinical experiences and take time to celebrate those wins. Like when you, when you pass, when you pass, uh, a course, when you, when you get the score you wanted, and even if you don't get the score you wanted and, and it was, you know, close to what you wanted to get. I mean, medical school is tough. It's real tough. So Uh, you know, just the fact that, that you're making it through, you're, you're busting your butt to pass medical school to become a doctor is worthy of applause. I mean, it's, it's no small task to get through medical school, even if you're at the bottom of your class. Um, and you know, so there, there's, there's a whole lot to unpack about my experience in medical school, but I wanted to just start out with that, you know, five mistakes I made because I feel that there's kind of this, you know, in medical school, not a lot of people um, open up about their insecurities or, you know, mistakes that they made or, you know, 
little failures along the way because there's the, the further along you get, the more professional you have to behave and and kind of you know I don't want to say fake it till you make it, but you know you don't a, as a physician um, every physician needs to have a certain degree of omitting confidence in their decision making and um, you know their expertise and their knowledge so um, you know you have to develop a habit of you know understanding that you make mistakes but you know learning from them and moving on quickly without kind of expressing your feelings about them um, too publicly so that's just my perspective and we can get into all that and in later videos, but I just wanted to pump this one out there and get that first video out. And um, also just a little light plug at the end um, for other topics that I'm interested in talking about. Um, I am a baseball player. So if you guys wanna, you know, see me talk about, you know, how I was able to play baseball during medical school, um, I would love to make a video on that. It's Baseball is something that I've done my whole life and I love it so much and I, I don't think I'll, I'll ever stop. It's just my favorite game in the world. Um, also, I like playing PlayStation on my free time. I play Call of Duty, I play Rocket League. Um, I play all kinds of different games. Last of Us, um, God of War. I haven't played God of War in a while, but... Um, and I'm also hugely passionate about personal finance. I'm like pretty obsessive over my over my personal finance and drives my fiance crazy. Um, but I, I would love to share with you guys, you know, kind of how I manage my finances in medical school. And also I'm pretty heavily invested in cryptocurrency as well. So if that's something you guys are interested in hearing about, um, you know, what my recommendations would be for short term, long term, you know, or, you know, whether you should believe in it or not believe in it, um, happy to talk about that in the video as well so um if you have any questions about um you know medical school in general or how to you know how to get into medical school with your current situation and you know you you, you have any specific questions about the process um you know i guess leave a comment or reach out to me um uh i pretty new to this so i i'll like put my i don't know email or something in the in the description but um yeah, reach out with any questions, anything you want addressed in a separate video. Hopefully, you know, I plan on the next videos being kind of more refined and edited and maybe some music and things like that. Um, you know, definitely higher quality than this one. But um, anyway, if you made it to this, if you made it this far in this rambling video, thanks for sticking with me. Um, I just, I feel like I have a lot to share, but you know, in future videos, I'll be a lot more concise and to the point and, and clear about everything to, to make these videos really, really worth your while to watch. So um, that's my goal for this channel. Um, I, I really wanna interact um, with you guys out there and, and help in any way I can. But um, again, thanks for watching. I'll head out and see you in the next video.